folks, Zoss here. We're going to go into the alto flute in a little more depth. This is my G alto flute, which has got six holes, it's four on top, two thumb holes. What it is, it's an octave lower than a regular six hole G flute. So, some of the G flute things that I specified in other videos, such as the pentatonic fingering. Now this is how it works with the alto flute. If you haven't seen the G other videos, these two fingers always stay together. This index finger stays put. Now on the G alto flute, since you have different fingering, so instead of these sticking together, these stick together. Top, bottom. And this thumb stays put. So your pentatonic fingering comes out on the alto flute sounding like this. Starting with the left hand down, this finger off. In the G alto flute, that would be C major pentatonic. Now, if you started on the second hole, lift up one, that would be A minor pentatonic. So that's keeping the pentatonic fingering position, which means you're actually using only four holes because this top thumb stays put and these two lift together. So that's the pentatonic fingering position for the alto flute. Now one important consideration for the G alto flute is that Due to the aerodynamics involved in the wall thickness and the bamboo and the nodes and stuff like that, that we don't have the full second octave just by playing on the holes. Now, sometimes we can do that if we get a bamboo with a really thin wall and we make really, really big holes, which is actually a little uncomfortable for some people to play with. But if we do that, then the second octave is perfectly there. But the downside is the big holes and just some people have a hard time with that. So to keep regular nice little size holes here, we have an alternate fingering if you want to get the whole second octave. Please refer to the fingering chart that I sent you with your flute. And I'll demonstrate how it goes here. First octave is just regular, regular holes. No problem there. Second octave, you pretty much only got your right hand is normal. Now for the left hand, we've got alternate fingering. You can get all the notes, but it's a little tricky. Look at the fingering chart. Second octave. See? Right hand is okay. Now, if we tried to lift these because of the small holes and because of the bamboo wall thickness, it's going to be bad. <laughs> like this. See, it, it's a little off. So what we do is, for the first half of the second octave, use your right hand. Then, Put all your fingers back down and blow harder. We're utilizing 
the harmonic series here. That will get you your perfect fifth very nicely. Watch this. See that? I put all my hands back down and blow a little harder. We're using that overtone to get the fifth. Then for the sixth, lift both of these. Then you could lift your thumb here. That gets your seventh. Put them all down again. Now, that's a little tricky. So, I would suggest that if you've got a bass flute, you probably want bass notes. So, you don't want to mess around with that higher octave anyway. Do you? If you do, then you either learn the alternate fingering or we can custom make you a flute if, if you've got wider finger pads. You have really big holes. Really big holes will get us that full second octave. But anyway, most people are happy with the bass flute with the bass notes. I mean, really. Most people really don't go beyond the first octave anyway. But with this model, you can go one and a half octaves, and that's usually enough. See, watch this. I won't use any of the tricky fingering. And we'll get a lot of notes. And it's plenty cool, you know? <laughs> Check it out. The G alto flute, a little more in depth. You want to adopt one of these babies? Let me know. We'll fix you up. Have fun and happy tooting. <laughs>